Reflections are very useful. They can be used to emulate mirrors, for instance, reflections in water and lakes, deflecting objects off a plane, such as like Pong. And I'll be discussing two types of reflections. So if I have a straight line like this, and I have an object moving in this direction, I can have it reflect or kind of deflect when it hits the surface, or I can have it reflect along the same axis. And these two are basically just negative directions of each other. I'm now going to show you how to calculate the directions of both of these reflections, and I'm going to use two methods to do so. I'm going to show you with quaternions and without. Let's create a new page. So if I have a straight line like this, but no, it doesn't have to be a straight horizontal line like this along the x-axis. It can be rotated in any way you want, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use a horizontal line along the x-axis. So first of all, I need to know the normal vector. More specifically, I'm going to use a unit normal vector. And so you can get these either by using the cross product, like I've shown you earlier, or you can use a quad or a model which already has the normals calculated for you. So if you're using array, you can use collision results to get the normals from them. So but you need to know the normal, that's a very important point. So if I have a direction vector, but I need to do it in this direction. Well, I don't need to, but it's a lot easier to demonstrate if I have the direction pointing away first and not towards the plane. So I know that I can calculate this angle here using the dot product. And But first of all, I'm going to draw the reflection. So I'm going to have it reflect... Oh, that's too pale. I'm going to have it reflect like this. And we know that angle is going to be the same as this. No, it's not. It's going to be the same as this angle. Get rid of this. We'll draw the other normal going down like that. Okay, so if each of these are unit vectors, then they're both going to have lengths of one. And if I take the cross product, which if you remember is a dot b equals cos theta, assuming a and b are unit vectors. So I'm going to be taking the cross product between the normal and we call this a. So we're just going to say that b is the normal. And then this will give us cos theta. And if you remember earlier, cos theta equals adjacent over the hypotenuse triangle. So if I draw oops, if I draw a straight line, let me draw a straight line, then we know the hypotenuse is one, so we can say that cos theta equals the adjacent length, which is this length here. Oh, I shouldn't have used A and A, you're going to get confused. So this is vector A, and this A means adjacent. So A dot B, or in our case, big A dot N, equals the adjacent length. And if I multiply the adjacent length by the unit normal vector, I get the length in the normal direction, which in our case is directly in the y-axis. But if I take 
two of these so that the lengths are at this magnitude, then taking two dot products multiplied by the direction of the normal and take that away from the a vector, then I get this direction here, which is the reflection direction. So if you didn't quite get that, so I take the vector A and I subtract it by this vector here, which is the dot product of A dot N, which gives me this this distance here and I'm going to multiply that by the unit normal to give me the distance in the unit normal direction and I'm going to multiply that by 2 and that gives me the reflection direction here and if I wanted Oh, and don't forget to normalize it afterwards so that this direction is a unit vector as well. And if I wanted to find the reflection like this, I would simply negate the direction that's facing it. And Jamie has a method for that. I will now show you how to do this using quaternions. I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to draw a line again. Draw. We still need our normal vector. I'm going to name this N again. And a quick primer. If you remember, if I have a vector and I have a quaternion defined for a rotation, if I multiply the quaternion by the vector, I get the <laughs> God. I get the new vector in that quaternion rotation. And I'm going to be using that to create this reflection here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so if I have a direction vector again in this direction, I will call this, I'll call this little a this time, and I have an angle theta, then the first thing I'm going to do is, okay, no, wait, before that, I'm going to be doing the rotations deflecting this time because it's easier to demonstrate by quaternions so if I can find the quaternion of this angle I can then need to find the axis at which I rotate and then I can rotate this vector all the way to this side so if you imagine it's not a straight line along the x-axis but it's for instance like a quad like this at a very obscure angle and I've got a direction hitting direction vector hitting this side. I need to reflect it in some direction like this. So I need to know what axis to rotate the new vector. In our case, it's very simple. It's going to be the z axis. And if you remember, the cross product can be used to find the vector perpendicular to two vectors, which in our case will be the normal and the x-axis. And so that will give us the z-axis. And that is all, can also be used for any types of different rotations of the plane. So first of all, I need to find the axis to rotate around. And that can be found simply by doing a dot no it's a dot cross product 
of n. And in our case, it's going to be the z axis. And I then need to find the angle. And I'm going to use the dot product for that. So if I have a dot b equals cos theta. And I'm going to assume that both the normal and vector a are both unit vectors, so they both have lengths 1, so that this is valid. I then need to find theta, so I'll get theta equals, I don't know, 30 degrees, or whatever that is in radians. And I'll use, I'll show you how to do this in Jamie in a minute, and then all I need to do is rotate this angle. I've got, to I've got to create a quaternion out of it first, and I'll use the from angle axis method in JME using the cross product axis. Now rotate it to get this vector here. So to recap, you do the cross product to find the axis you need to rotate. Use the dot product to find the angle. Create a quaternion out of it and then rotate the normal vector by that angle. Simples. Let's go do it in JME. Okay, I'm going to create a new file. Control N. Get my test template. I'm going to call this reflection. I'm going to create a geometry class variable. I'm first going to create I'm going to create a quad first actually. New quad. Let's give it a width of three and uh, if it's quite big. Say so two and two, control shift I. Going to create a new geometry out of the quad. Give it a name of quad, give it the quad mesh. Oh, that should be Q. No, it won't be a G. Just, oh no, this is Q. Assign the material to the geometry, attach the geometry to the root node. What am I doing? Let's control shift F6 to see it in action. Okay, awesome. I'm going to rotate it a little bit around the X and Y axis. Maybe quarter pi and quarter pi on the Y axis. Okay, I'm then going to set up some input mappings. Input manager dot add mapping. Going to just call this G. It's a new key trigger. Takes a key input. What is it? Hold on. Push it down. Key code. I think it's just key input. G. And then need to add a key listener. I call it an action listener. I'm going to attach the G mapping. I then need to create the action listener. Equals new action listener. Yep. It's going to create the declaration for me. And I'm going to say if the name equals G. Then I'm going to first of all create a new ray. I'm going to point it from the cam direction. First of all, I need cam location. It's going to face the camera direction. Shift I. 